Mail call, hookaholics. Uh, welcome back to Foul Mouth Fishing. Um, I am very happy I got these packages actually a day or two ago uh, between the two of them. I haven't had a moment's rest to actually put up a, a video. So uh, I got a little bit of mail from two awesome hookaholic channels on YouTube, uh, Fish in the Mitten Outdoors and of course Bee Fishing Outdoors. Um, I'm going to leave the link to their channels in, in the description. I'm going to do one video for the unboxing of Bee Fishing and another video uh, shortly after for the un, un mail opening of, uh, of Fish in the Mitten. I'm really stoked. I really appreciate it, both of you. Um, but uh, we're going to start off with Bee Fishings right here. And then uh, I'll, you'll have another chance to watch uh, Fish in the Mitten, which sent me some really awesome uh, fishing lures from uh, an, uh, a newly established, or at least to me, a newly established micro fishing lure company. Uh, on the other hand, these guys right here, if you watch, and I know many of you do watch Bee Fishing Outdoors, you actually got to watch him start producing uh, these lures uh, for me. I was very, um, I was very happy to, uh, to give him a little welcoming gift, uh, thanking him, you know, for, uh, you know, Congratulating him really for uh, for both his his, you know, his family, for the channel taking off, for uh, him getting into the Catch Co organization. So I sent him up a box from um, from the Anglers Hall, and in reciprocation, he gave me something that is to me very very more precious and far more valuable. He gave me some hand poured bee fishing outdoors, um, you know, handmade baits. So that being said, uh, let's tear into this. He wanted to. Um, he wanted to see, one second, razor blade, razor blade, where is the razor blade? Oh, I'll use this thing. He wanted to uh, to see what these would look like in the foul mouth fishing test tank. So, uh, well, oh, wow, you definitely, definitely, definitely took it to heart to tape these up. Tape on the wings, tape on the wings. And of course, people are honking outside. So, he sent me, ooh, three packs, <laughs> three packs of baits and some awesome stickers. So, uh, let's do this real quick. It's now an officially a, a bee fishing outdoors test tank. So, the foul mouth fishing test tank is branded. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. So, I got, got a sticker for, for a tackle box and a uh, nice one on the old tank here. So he, he sent me these plastics. He made one floating Ole Natural and the original Ole Natural. So, and then he gave me, oh, black and red flake. I love this color too. So we got black, red flake, little finesse worms, and we've got some Ole Naturals, and they look pretty identical, except he put a special additive into one bag, which says float. So uh, these floating finesse, he put an additive into his Plastisol, and uh, these are just the standard straight Plastisol. That said, he did make mention that his plastic that he was starting with, that he was trying out, was actually a buoyant plastic to begin with. So I don't know. We might, we might come across something uh, very special. Um, this is as much a, a thrill to show him how they react as it is a thrill to me to learn a little bit about, about bait making and, and soft plastics and how these things act in the water. And uh, I have a feeling from my science background, we might actually get some, some surprise, uh, surprise information out of this. So I'm going to reset this camera a little bit. Excuse, I might try to make an edit to cut out a little bit of herky-jerky stuff, but I don't really do edits, so bear with me. So let's uh, zoom in here on the old test tank. Eee, be fishing. And bound down. There we go. Decent enough view. And as always, I use these, uh, I use a little dock demon here that I spun up with, uh, you know, a little jerry-rigged Texas style. Got a pegged little bullet sinker and a little EWG offset worm hook. Um, we got that for a little Texas. I also, I'm not a big fan of the guy, but uh, if you know David Dudley Outdoors, his YouTube channel, he's uh, he did these um, 
David Dudley uh, stand-up jig heads. Uh, I think these are Precision Lure, I think is the company. I forget off the top of my head, the manufacturer. But these are his stand-up jig heads. I got to say, these are absolutely awesome, awesome stand-up jig heads. Those little antennae lay this thing out perfectly flat every time. So we're going to do a little bit of the old stand-up jig head with these worms. Um, and, of course, the, he wanted to see this on a Texas rig. So I did this little, uh, you know, pegged Texas rig style. Um, so we'll start off right off the bat here with the stand-up jig head. And I will start it with, I'll take one of these black and blue. Let me do the black and blue first. Tear into this little worm. Typical line up the center of the hook. Come out a little bit, roll it over. Peg it on that bait keeper and just expose it through the meat of the hook. Like so. Do -do -do. And just back it up just enough. There we go. So now we got this nicely little Texas rigged finesse worm. So let's drop her in the old tank. So this is the maiden voyage of the bee fishing finesse worms. So now I don't have it on a swing head, a swim head, but you can see the action of the tail a little bit. Definitely kicks quite a bit. It's obviously pretty darn good on the uh, on the stand up jig head. So like I said, if I can land her on the wood there. Oop. Hop it around a little bit. But definitely the tail sits up. Let's take a little line out here. Tail sits up. It's not, this is the untouched plastic. And what intrigued me about, uh, about this is um, adding mass, adding things to the volume of the bait, like the flake. Uh, I was wondering how that reacts to the overall buoyancy of, of the fishing lure. So, even though this, uh, you know, this isn't entirely a, a, a non-floating plastic, and you can see it stands up literally perfectly, and you can just, little twitches, get that tail to flicker, stand up. Um, I was wondering how it would react comparatively with, uh, you know, the floating plastisols. So, I'll take this out here, I'll put this aside for a sec. And we'll get these two real quick. These two natural colors. I am absolutely ecstatic. These look through the bag absolutely awesome. So we got the floating. Ooh, they smell good too. A little bit of garlic he sent to them. This is the floating. And then I have a bag of the non-floating. So let's... Uh, Try to get a better view. Let's see if we can't get from the top of the tank here. Mind you. Here's the top of the old test tank. So we got a buoyant floating worm. You see right there. Floating on the top of the old test tank. Now let's look at that's the floating, and this is the non-floating. So I'll keep the floating to the left of camera. This is the non-floating. Oh, that's interesting. All right, let's do this. Let's drop them down. That's interesting. Okay. So... The plastisol by nature was already a floating um, plastic. So I'm sorry to say, uh, you know, Brett, I mean, I appreciate it, but I hope you didn't uh, waste a lot of that powder on this um, because it seems like, I mean, it does definitely, it actually recovers a little bit more natural. The other one kind of, it kind of comes back up to the surface 
I don't know, maybe comparatively the same rough uh, rate. There's more wiggle. I will say this. There's, there's more natural wiggle in the floating one as it rises than the other one. This one swims almost like a snake, where the one that you added the floating material, the floating additive, it, it definitely does that undulation upwards, the more, uh, you know, inchwormy kind of floating. So we'll throw this. Um, now that's the floating one. This is the non-floating one. I wasn't trying to play uh, play the shell game on you there. Let's uh, undo this. How to manage to wrap that around? I do not know. All right, here we go. Give me a little hook. All right, we'll throw this on the old Texas rig. Put you through the center. Come out about a thing. Twist you around. Pop, pop it over the wire. And just get hook it. So now we got this guy on an old Texas rig. I got I'll leave it unpegged a little bit. So, uh, let me throw this back down for a little better view from the water's perspective. Excuse the light. Put that out of the way. Don't need that there. So, definitely a very perfectly natural color. Looks just like a, you know, a worm. Try to see if we can't take this over here with some artificial cover. I'm hooked already on. <laughs> oh no, I'm hung up. I'm going to lose my bait. <laughs> of all things, I lose. I get hooked on the actual peg. Let's take up the old sleeve here for a sec. Take two. How did I manage to get hung up in the in the weeds inside a 35 gallon tank? I do not know. Let's take that bobber stop and move it out of the way. Alright. I'm definitely gonna try to edit some of this crap out. <laughs> so here we go. Alrighty, that is really, I, I do love it, I love this color, I think that's about as realistic as you can get, it's that not, it's not dark brown, it's not, you know, it's that little hue of a little bit of pink and brown in it, that makes it absolutely spot on, a little bit of black flake in there, to give it that natural earthy tone, so, I am absolutely ecstatic ecstatic about this um just real quick i just want to see something i'm going to take that uh that floating ole and compare that side by side with the black blue 
put you back up here so you can get a top-down perspective of the old tank. So, uh, so we got the black blue. I'm gonna unthread it off of this here stand-up jig head. Gently twist it back off so I don't tear up the head too bad. I become very uh, astute at pulling soft plastics off of jig heads and trying to save the head as much as possible. Gently just twisting it off on corkscrewing it. So we have here, again, this is the straight plastisol, which in the, in the uh, non-floating version of the old natural um, was already buoyant. And this is the floating version. He added that, that floating material to his, uh, to his mix. So we're going to drop that in. That's interesting. All right, I'll get another view of that in a second. Let's try to get a better top down without dropping the camera in. So here you have a, the stick bait finesse worm. It actually will submerge and then flutter back up. I'll get a couple of side shots coming through the other side of the tank through the face. But you're actually subsurface right now and it's slowly rising back to the surface of the water. And then the floating one for comparison, I mean that one just dove, that time it dove all the way down to the bottom. Let's do this one, let's drop that down. Yeah, I'm going to definitely do some real quick side, side view here, because you can certainly see a big difference in the plastic itself. So we'll get you a perspective from the side of the tank here real quick. And uh, so here's the old natural dropping in. Barely even see if it even came into camera view. Tip up a little bit here. So here's the old natural drops in and comes to the surface. Drops in, swims away. Actually, pretty good swimming action. Now here's the black. And red flake. Yeah, you see that's rolling and undulating, and it's almost neutrally buoyant. Now that's interesting. That's what I had a suspicion of. When you start adding things like um, your red flakes, your blue flakes, etc., it will almost act similar to adding salt to the bait because you're adding some you know, micro weights, I mean, it's, it's minute weight, but it's still weight to the actual plastic. And it's creating this almost semi-neutrally buoyant worm. That's got such a, that is an amazing uh, return rate for, you know, for a slow rise. That is going to catch some fish, I guarantee it. Sink that down, you know, weightless sink it down weightless because as soon as it hits the water just the hook weight is going to drive it down head first it'll sink and then uh, swim away or swim towards you what have you and then just slowly flutter back up that is going to be a fish killer so I am absolutely ecstatic I'm more than pleased with both of these I, I can't thank Brett and Chris at Bee Fishing Outdoors enough um, you know, I never expected anything in return. I just, I enjoyed, you know, giving something that I can get a hold of, uh, just as a congratulations for all that they've done and the hard work that they've put into their channel. Hopefully someday I'll have, uh, you know, be able to reap some benefits. I just appreciate everybody who enjoys coming to watch my content, get a little information and insight. If I can share something, uh, you know, informative, educational, entertaining, that's just a plus, um, so, I mean, I appreciate all of you hookaholics come to visit me. Let's set that up. And, uh, and I certainly appreciate, you know, other channels. So, uh, you know, from me to Brett and Chris, um, a very, very heartfelt thank you very much. I am I'm very lucky. Uh, it does mean a lot that something that, uh, like I said to him, something that's made mass manufactured by Yum or Gary Yamamoto, it's an assembly line, it's pumped into an extruder, it's a thousand baits, you know, in 15 minutes, and they're all identical, and there's nothing different, there's nothing unique about them. And then you have something 
that's made with, you know, a human's ingenuity and a human's touch and every single one of these baits that he pours is going to be ever so slightly different. Um, that really is special. That's, that to me brings me back to, you know, as a kid growing up when your granddad would take, um, you know, a piece of wood and whittle something into a fishing bait or old wine corks and turn them into fishing lures. Um, that hands-on heart and, and passion and craftsmanship that goes along with hand-making baits is something that is quickly, uh, quickly being pushed to the wayside. So I hope these kind of crafts never die. So for, for me to you, thank you very much. I very much appreciate it. I hope that this uh, comparison side by side, I hope that lends a little bit of insight to you. Uh, I wasn't expecting quite that, but uh, I figured there might be some minute difference. I thought maybe in the, in the flutter, but uh, seeing the difference in the sink and recovery rate of this comparative to the floating um, version and the, of course, the non-floating version uh, of the natural, um, I'm sorry that the floating and non-floating seem to be almost on par with one another. Uh, there might be a, a little bit of difference, I don't know, but uh, I just don't see it uh, firsthand. But, hey, I'm going to catch lunkers with this. And uh, when I do, first chance I get, uh, I'm going to give a huge shout out to, uh, to, to uh, Brett and, and Chris uh, and be fishing outdoors. Um, thank you very much, Brett, for, for hand making these. Um, thank you very much from my heart to yours. All right. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, like, subscribe, and share. Um, I'm going to try to cut out some of this for time. You'll see. If I, if I edit it and cut out little pieces, it's going to be herky-jerky, but I apologize for that. I'm not an editor. I don't do, like, the, the fades in and fades out. I mean, I can, but I just, I'm not going to do that. It's not my, my style. Um, I appreciate it. Next video I'm going to drop is going to be from Fish in a Mitten. Um, these are some pretty cool baits. I actually saw a video he posted and jumped on the company, and he, I guess, got a bunch of testing uh, types, so he, he was gracious enough to throw me a handful of those testing uh, samples. So I'm going to try those out um, for a little bit of micro-fishing in the future on some little ponds and backwater streams and things like that for, you know, crappy and panfish, bluegill, um, little stuff like that, rock bass. We'll see. But these, these are going to be special. These are going to a special box. Uh, thank you very much. Foulmouth Fishing, like, subscribe, share. And as always, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll catch you on the next cast. Peace.